You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another voracious episode of Ask Drone You. <laughs> yes, welcome to another one. This is episode. 587. We're Paul and Rob, and we're glad to be with you today. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Seriously, thank you. Um, guys, today we're going to be talking about koas. The question is about koas. Um, we have a lot of videos on YouTube. If you go on our YouTube channel right now, how to apply for a authorization in airspace, one koa, how to get a nighttime um, authorization, another koa. Um, all through the portal. So if you're looking for that detailed information, please check out those YouTube videos. They are on our YouTube channel. Um, this podcast is really going to discuss uh, what authorizations, COAs, and waivers are needed for. Cool. All right. Question? Let's do Shall it. Shall we? Hi, Rob and Paul. My name is Roger Ford out of Lima, Ohio. I am a Part 107 pilot seeking to set up a business here in Lima. My website is machnun.net. My question is, I have heard you mention several times about the need for a COA, and I wonder if you could possibly go in greater detail as to why one may need a COA and how to go about applying for one. Thanks a bunch. All right. Thank you for the question. Again, guys, if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. We understand this particular question might be pretty basic for many of you, but we also know that a lot of listeners still have some confusion over this issue and, and what are they and why would I need one? And when I need one, how do I get one? All that kind of stuff. So we like to make sure that we're uh, taking care of everybody's needs as it relates to the questions that you guys have. So um, hopefully, even if you're familiar with them, you'll learn a little something new. So what is a COA, Paul? Certificate of authority. There's certificate of authority, certificate of waiver. Normally you need a cow. The COA was kind of something that was more relevant during the 333 time. Uh, these airspace authorizations, they are COAs. Um, it's something that you, if you want to fly beyond the scope of 107 and you want to waive certain rules so that you don't have to follow them, that's a COA. Right. Or excuse me, that is a cow. I, uh, again, spoke way too soon. Even the way the FAA puts out this information of COA versus cow, they use the terms even interchangeably on the certificates that they send out. So right. understand that a cow is waiving a law so that you can fly against that law. That's a cow. A COA is a certificate of authority or authorization, which means essentially you will have the authority to fly in certain controlled airspaces. You'll have the authority to have a new bird that you built and be, you know, have some sort of manufacturing standards. So so let's talk maybe about what are some of the, the primary categories of, of when and why somebody would need these. So for example, flying in particular airspace would be an obvious one. Um, flying at night. That's a koa. Uh -huh. okay. Flying at night is a cow. Right. So again, we can kind of cover both of these in the same conversation, right? Mm -hmm. um, flying over people is one that is C is cow. is a cow, but not many of them have been issued to date, right? Very little. Very few of those. Um, it seems like one of the ones that I'm getting asked about the most now is flying in, in restricted airspace, like There's a difference. Class B and so okay, forth. Okay, so that's controlled airspace, not yeah. restricted airspace. Thank you. Restricted airspace means no matter what, you can't fly a period. Controlled means you just need permission to get sure. control to fly. Okay. And I hear those mixed interchangeably all the time. So watch what you say. Not you. You. No, it, me too. Yeah. So that being said. <laughs> I just um, sounded like Hermit the, Kermit the Frog. So that would be an authorization. Okay. So not a cow. Um, although I would absolutely love to see a cow where, uh, man, if the FA would grant this, maybe I should just file for it just to see if they would grant it. I want a cow that I can fly in all controlled airspace up to 50 feet and at least, at least one nautical mile from any runway hmm. in controlled airspace. Okay. I wonder if they Why would do that. Why 50 feet? Maybe like, you don't think you'd need at least 100? Well, in the desert Southwest, we have these things called Adobe homes with flat roofs and we don't really 
film tall buildings here. So for the Southwest, I think it would make sense. Maybe a hundred feet for everywhere else. Okay. <laughs> but Curious. in all honesty, m- the most successful shots are like just high enough to show the surrounding area. Um, and but still have the focal point of your subject. I understand. I just also know some of those pull away shots that you like. You're probably ending up higher than 50 feet when oh, you're totally. done. Totally. Yeah. So, but I you can you. also exaggerate those shots if you were to start out really, really low and then build out before you go up and then slowly, slowly go up and then you can sure. speed ramp the whole thing and make it look like it's bigger. Makes sense. It's all about perception, Rob. Indeed. And with video, we know you can pretty much like statistics. Make it say whatever you want it That's to say, exactly right? right. <laughs> that is exactly right, Rob. Um, so, guys, be careful. Koa, uh, cow. Uh, if you want to waive certain things of 107, you can, like nighttime waivers, like flying over people. In fact, there's a whole list. I've been trying to pull it up uh, while we're sitting here. Um, but, in fact, let's see. Uh, no, I don't, I don't have that list, but the ones that I know that you can waive is flying from a moving vehicle. Um, I know that you can waive, uh, nighttime flying. There's a couple things that you can waive. I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah. So, um, and, and so there's a portal, right? That you go on and, and you fill out the information. It's relatively straightforward. I found the answer, so sorry for the delay, guys. Part 107 includes the option to apply for a certificate of waiver or a CAL. The CAL will allow a SUAS operation to deviate from certain provisions of Part 107 if the administrator finds that the proposed operation can be safely conducted under the terms of the CAL. What can you waive? Operation from a moving vehicle, daylight ops, visual line of sight ops, visual observer ops, operation of multiple small unmanned aircraft systems, yielding the right of way, operating over people, operating in certain airspace, operating limitations for small unmanned aircraft. So we covered actually a good majority of those without even having to pull up the list. So that's good. That makes me feel good. Good. Um, But again, so the way that you go about getting one of those is you go to their site, right? And you fill out an uh, in, in an online portal and you put your information and all that good stuff. Yeah. A lot of people have said it's really best to have a lawyer. Um, you know, I understand why John Rupert said that. <laughs> 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 you don't need one though. <laughs> well, we've had a lot of folks that have just watched the videos that you, like what you and Vic did, right? Yeah. And followed that very, very carefully and have been successful. Yes. And I will say this. There's one video I really want John Rupert to put out, and I and I think it would be a huge list builder for him. But maybe I should save that for him. No, I, I say go for it. Come you, on, you go for. You don't think I should like help a brother out? Well, no, I'm not sure help. he cares actually. I he I don't think he does, but I think you're helping him out by either way, right? Um, if you were to put out that like how to register your drone with an N number, because we've like never put that out. Um, because he was like, oh, you can't do that. So I was like, yeah, all right. Um, I hmm. wish he would put that out. Okay. So cool. Maybe he will. Anyway, on that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. Hope this helped you out. Again, if you're looking to file specific COAs or COWs, go to our YouTube page and check out how to file for a nighttime waiver, how to file for controlled airspace waiver. Um, in fact, we have, I'm pretty sure we have been responsible for a large number of nighttime waivers. I've seen at least over a hundred people in the DroneU community who have acquired their nighttime waivers. And see, that's the benefit of DroneU. A lot of people ask, why would I go to DroneU to learn about 107 over Remote Pilot 101 over all these? Because that's just the first course. Because we have 30 courses on top of that to make you truly successful. That's why. It's not just, you're not just paying for one course, paying for access to it all. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Dronio.